Hi. Hi. Now this is a bit weird because you're all here to see music and I'm not going to do music even though I usually do music. So, and I've never read in Bristol before so I hope you're going to be like super kind. I don't know if this is going to stay here like this. Do you mind? I'm just like faffing with your mind. Okay, so. I'm going to read, I'm going to take my jacket. I was like freezing out there and I was, I was um, seeing Millie in her um, dress and thinking, how is she wearing a dress? I'm freezing and as soon as I've stepped up here and boiling. Okay, so first I'm going to read a poem called Maintainers. Too much to do, chores breed chores, a woman's work is never done. In this house, it's all 50-50, feminism all the way, and I still never stop. I ain't sat down all day, my mum used to say. Perpetual piles of dog hair, cat hair, dirty dishes, dirty laundry, utility bills, missed calls from family, the red, the unread, long lists of IOUs fastened to the fridge with a magnet. In Mer Lederman's manifesto for maintenance art, she tells us we must value the boring, the repetitive. I moan that I don't have a social life. I feel lonely. Note to self, when feeling lonely, don't isolate. I book up my whole week with friends, meetings, events. Then I complain I have no time to write. I start cancelling friends, meetings, and events. And then when I sit down to write, all I can think of is cleaning. Compulsive preoccupation with equals addiction. I arrest urges to wipe kitchen units. Let go and let God and remember, you'll never stay emotionally sober without AA. Now I can write, but instead, I get on Facebook, scroll, scroll, more scrolling, scroll, 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 cannot stop scrolling, still not writing. My guest that died this week of a massive heart attack, and she said she hated what she loved the most, writing. Let's take a moment to imagine a world where Frédéric Chopin sits at his piano and every time he plays three notes, he is distracted. Does the poor Chopin have ADHD? No, he's just checking his Facebook. <laughs> After composing eight bars, Chopin tweets his latest progress for the ultimate hit of three likes. Human associates happiness with constant brain stimulation. Must hook up to phone, Twitter, Facebook, email at all times. Positive likes and comments equal self-worth. Tips for how to successfully avoid feelings and evolving or being productive in any way. Drugs, alcohol, cleaning, interneting, mastering, fucking, raging, spending, hating, killing, eating, church. <laughs> it's not how much you do it, but why you do it. <laughs> you don't work? No, well, yes, I wrote a poem today. You didn't earn any money though, right? Well, no, Jesus, even my mother never asks where I get my money from. I just never hear you talk about work, that's all. You wouldn't believe I've been off meds for six months. Lamotrigine Jean is an anticonvulsant used in the treatment of epilepsy. It's also a mood stabilizer and works wonders with bipolar. I don't have bipolar, I have a small handful of traits that match up with a myriad of personality disorders. You can't put me in a box, man. <laughs> I have just got one thing. <laughs> Lamotrigine Jean comes with black box warning of a life-threatening skin reaction. Milder side effects include loss of concentration, loss of creativity, loss of sex drive, loss of sense of self, loss of seeing any joy in life. My randomly burst into tears in inappropriate public places. <laughs> Okay, that went better than expected then. <laughs> okay, so this is, a, this is a poem and it's about being in a, a reading group full, well, a, a workshop. I was in a workshop in Toronto in January and it's about being in a group of poets and feeling not like a poet, but being a poet. <laughs> and, and we were studying a poet called James Schuyler. I'm sitting in this reading group, collected Skylar being passed around the room, each poet reading impeccably in that slow, dull, sleepy drawl that we all know. 
lots of sensitive pauses and purposeful nuances. But where is the attack? Where is the body in all this? I'm writing when I should be listening, like the notes I scrolled to friends at the back of the classroom, whilst the teacher's voice hung someplace in the periphery of my mind. You're right, I am an imposter. I'm not one of you. I cannot spell. I cannot use correct English grammar. I cannot read other people's poems aloud without a stammer. I stutter along the line, falling hard in all the wrong places. If I have five ways of spelling definitely, I'll surely never understand form. To really understand music, you really have to learn how to play other people's, they said. So I never understood. I was a great actor, but I couldn't remember my lines. I could have been a dancer, I had the timing and rhythm of miles, but I couldn't fall on the steps. The dyslexic mind cannot cope with instructions. The already written, the already played. I work fast, usually whilst eating, texting, talking, or petting a cat, and revision just bores me to death. Oh, can't I trade form for energy? Come on, let me off just this once. Okay, I'm going to dedicate this next one to my cat, who was killed by a car two weeks ago. And, um... Yeah, it's really weird because I wrote this poem about a week before. It's called Automobile. Freeway graveyard above the earth. Those who are soft, crushed. Automobile will break your legs, will burst your brain like helium balloon. Automobile housing numb, high, corn syrup hordes. Automobile. When will you understand foxes don't know how to look left and right? Automobile, when will they program you to courteously stop for a family of hedgehogs to cross the road? Automobile, I need you to feel sorry for the twisted wings you left, battered and unable to fly. Automobile, I'm crying and I can't open my eyes. Automobile, I want you to stop and sweep up the dying remains of the baby squirrel you just hit and take her to the vets for heart surgery. Automobile, you are our last hope. If the tin man benefited from a heart, then so could you, for your human driver has grown dark and cold. Okay, so I'll read one more poem and then I'm going to do like a, read a mini story. It's called I Dreamed I Had Your Baby. It's a poem about when you have a dream about someone you probably shouldn't have a dream about. <laughs> the neighbors woke me doing some construction next to my head. I was bang out deep in dream. You were there in it. I had just given birth to your baby. You were comfortable. I was, as usual, worrying, knowing your wife was somewhere in the two-room flat you both shared. But I never did see her, just felt her there. Your boy child wanted to hang with us and play. He liked me. You rubbed my back, constantly touching me to show your great love for me, to show your lack of fear. Our baby was sleeping. You called our girl child Huey by mistake. We hadn't chosen a name. I wanted you. I wanted it just to be us and for your wife to disappear. I wanted your back rubs to turn into sex rubs. I loved you there. Everything was perfect. For you it was all perfect because ultimately you are a Buddhist and I am all talk. Your wife is out there. She, she is nervous. You stand between us, eyes half closed, extenuating our crazy making. You the Bodhisattva and us the jealous mothers. Okay, this is called Piscean Style, and uh, it's a little story about being in rehab. I sat and stared into space, planning my escape. The group talk about feelings, needs, and issues echoed and bounced around somewhere in the back of my brain. I'd taken in more information about addiction and dysfunctional families than any human mind could cope with. I had resentfully shed my proud English cynic attitude and was feeling a lot better for it. As cliche would have it, 
I had lived my three months in rehab in true Piscean style. I had taken every moment in, with utter seriousness, knowing my survival depended on it, and I was rewarded with a scholarship to stay at the center free of charge. It's like winning a big prize for being the most hardworking, fucked up person. <laughs> Simultaneously, I was doing all the things we were told not to do. On the first day, our head counselor had smugly let us know that there would be people there ready to break the rules and generally try to do things their way. <laughs> she asked us to remember that it was our way that had got us incarcerated in the first place. Terminally unique is the term used for patients in denial that are convinced that they are different and shouldn't be in there in the first place. Among breaking more trivial rules like smoking, drinking coffee, and calling home, I became infatuated with an ex-soldier. I spent my time obsessing over his sharp, angular, all-American all face and tormented by the fact that he'd actually killed a man. Eventually, I broke and fucked him in the minuscule toilet next to the head counselor's office. It turned out that she didn't have eyes in the back of her head after all. Soldier Boy left, and just as I was confessing my sins to a, to a therapist, in walked Mary, a six-foot gorgeous 19-year-old debutante. She had brought shame to her super-rich Irish Catholic family by joining a black street gang and becoming a cocaine addict and dealer just for fun. I suppose my ego was not impressed at her grand entrance. She was cocky and full of herself, so much so that when we went on a field trip to the local caves, she pinned me to the wall in the dark and forced a tongue in my mouth, and I liked it. <laughs> I figured my time was up, and I announced to the group I was flying out to Miami that day to meet a guru. Who is this guru? said my counselor. I don't exactly know. My stripper friend in London put me in touch with him, and he's going to turn me into a goddess. Thank you.
Talk next. Time, 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 time.
Yes, you should. 